fighting gestures. So people want to get in shape because it's the New Year's. So people, um, people seem to think of themselves as skinny and fat because guys hold weight in the gut and girls, women hold hold it in, you know, the breasts, the, the thighs. So people are like, hey, how do I lose fat and gain muscle at the same time? So I'm gonna give when it I'm gonna say when it can happen, how to do it, and why it might not be the most practical option. So let me just start whittling to see if I can level up and let's talk about this. So Okay, so who can do it? One, rank novices. Rank novices can put on muscle faster than anyone. So, you know, uh, skinny, skinny fat teen or just adult who never, who never uh, worked out, you can put on muscle in a deficit, assuming, assuming you have some fat. If you're skinny and you're like, hey, how... How do I get rid of this? How do I get rid of, you know, you just like pinch the side and you're like, how do I get rid of this? Well, probably nothing you can do about that. That's just, you know, um, almost essential levels, not technically. Now, the second, the second group is people, people on steroids. So intermediates, but people on steroids, they can recount because drugs are magical. Um, so what drugs will do is that they'll shuttle nutrients to your muscles, burn fat, burn fat while shuttling muscle nutrients to your muscles. Certain anabolics will do this better than others. I'm not really going to get into that because they don't promote drugs. So, um, the the last group that can do this, and this is everybody who's intermediate. If you're advanced, depending on depending on what that means for you, depending on Natty or not. But if you're any, if you're advanced in your training, you can't, you can't recomp. You know, you might spin your wheels for the better part of a decade. Here's, here's the last group. Those who are obese, morbidly obese, or very obese, or just very overweight. And those are different. But basically, it's like if you have a gut out to here, your best, your best to, you know, almost you can lose, lose weight. You can lose weight and gain muscle in a deficit. Well, I mean, you can lose weight in a deficit, of course. But how would you go about this? So, say for breakfast, you're like, okay, I'm gonna have oatmeal, and I'm gonna have some egg whites with Tabasco sauce. And for lunch, you're going to have, a gr say you have a grilled turkey sandwich. And maybe as a snack after work, you have a salad. Some cob salad. And later for dinner, you have, say, some, some vegetables fried in butter. And with dinner, you have, say, some yogurt, which you use in some lean yogurt in place of a protein shake. And right before bed, you have some skim milk and before your workout. And this is the only time you have some Gatorade right before your workout or an energy drink right before your workout. But here's the thing. If you can keep the caffeine low, if you can keep the caffeine low throughout the day besides your workout or whenever you need energy and you can keep the sugar low, um, you'll have the biggest boost. Okay, sugar doesn't wear off, but caffeine, ca the effect of caffeine will wear off if you're a chronic user. Um, a good, here's the thing, at a certain point, you do get the effects of caffeine no matter what, because it's like, if you're drinking three cups of coffee a day, you, you'll have an increased Basically, like an increased pain tolerance. But, alright, so, now, here's the last thing. Why might this not be the most practical? Okay, here's, okay, one is adherence. One, unless you're really fat, you might not just not have the energy of running a novice linear progression. You might not be able to do heavy sets of five squats for multiple sets. You might not be able to do heavy squats in a deficit. 
you know, people say, oh, I don't have time to train. Okay, you work 120 hours a week, no. Hey, and I'm back. I just uh, ran out of space on my phone. So what I was saying, um, I have to delete some stuff, but what I was saying is, th the other reason related to adherence, why it wouldn't be practical. Okay, let's say, for instance, the maximum amount of calorie caloric deficit you can recomp in is 500. Okay, so if it's, it's like 600, you're losing muscle, but you're going up in strength because you have that, you know, neuromuscular efficiency. You're just being able to control more motor units into contraction. So whatever the hypothetical um, caloric deficit. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. Maybe, maybe eat at maintenance in that 2,500 calories. But the thing is, if you're eating at maintenance, if you're eating at maintenance, you might spend, you might get 2,500 calories to build a pound of muscle or 3,500 calories in a month to build a pound and a half of muscle. Well, the, the issue, the issue with that, the issue with that is, okay, you just lost one pound of fat and gained one pound of muscle. So when people, the problem is you can recomp a little bit, but it's like, okay, how much, how much fat and how much muscle do you want to gain? Okay, I want to gain 20 pounds of muscle. Mm -hmm. Okay. I mean, if you have, if you have, um, Top tier genetics, you might do that in like a year and a half. Okay, well, how, how many pounds of fat do you want to lose? I want to lose like 20, 20 to 40 pounds of fat at the same time, or 50. Here's here's the thing, here's the thing. Um, noobs, no offense, <laughs> noobs might not have elite level genetics. Like there was this article that said uh, women quit because they're quit before they start because they're afraid of getting too bulky, you won't, you know, I don't want to look like the bikini girls, you won't, they're, um, cheerleaders use steroids, cheerleader, cheerleaders use oral anabar, but it's like, you won't look like those, you won't look at whatever your ideal body is, you're not getting there, but here, here's, here's the other thing, Here's the other thing. So while guy, girls quit because they, they have high expectations, guys quit early on because they're not getting real results that are, quote, this was an article. I can't find it, but it's an article I read years ago. But, like, <laughs> guys quit because they're, they, um, they don't get gains that surpass steroids off steroids. You know, it's like, okay, um, performance-enhancing drugs work for, you know, were made for a reason, they work. People use them because they work, and the reality is they work better than just training alone. So, if you're on a cycle, if you're on a cycle, that gives you added recovery ability. So I've seen guys, I've seen guys on these cycles doing massive amounts of volume, junk volume, where it'll be like uh, four by eight squats, four by 12 leg extensions, three sets of six curl, leg curls. And then it'll be like, oh, I did a set of 24, two sets of 24 reps of Romanian deadlift. And then I did you know, um, Bulgarian split squats, which are just leg lunges. We used to, you know, they call them split squats, but, you know, they're just leg lunges. I split squats, and then they're like, I did... The, they'll have, like, this list of exercises that no natural would even need to learn. Like, <laughs> oh, I did all these leg machines. The problem is, actually, I think the naturals could almost get um, better results from a strength context, just because it's like, okay... Well, I just hear these new, these noobs who may or may not be natural, but the, the intermediates on steroids suffer from this. Okay, the late advanced guys on steroids suffer from the same problem. They have all these lifts, and it's like, okay, I've got to load all these lifts, right? So say, for instance, it's like, oh, hey, I'm, I did 310 squat. I'm going to go up to 315. I did... 200 bench, I'm going to go up to 200 two bench. I went up, you know, you only, when you're on a novice program and it's like press, bench,
bench, squat, deadlift, chin-ups. You can remember all your numbers, and I think that helps. It's like, yes, you have a log, where you have... And another thing is, having a home gym helps you look at what each of those are. I'm going to stop talking about that, because I, I don't want to give general information, because... Technically, according to YouTube's term policy, um, they want original videos where it's like each each video has original content. So, back to why cutting and bulking would be more advantageous. So here's the thing. Here's the thing. When you cut, say you, say you lose fifty, say you lose fifty pounds of fat and five pounds of muscle. Well, how how quickly are you going to get that five pounds of muscle back? Here's the thing, you might get it back in like triple the time. So initially it might take you three months, but you're gonna get it back literally over the course of four weeks. So you literally might you might do literally ultimately the only cut you need to do, the only big cut, the only big cut you need to do for health. So say for instance the average American man is 190 and he's gonna cut down to um, 150 and then build back to 170 by a muscle and a little extra fat. Well, that muscle he lost in the initial 40 to 50 pound cut, that's going to come on in like four weeks and the dude's going to be like, wow, I got all these gains. You know, my shirts are filling out. Um, why programs like Star and Stray, Strong Lifts, um, Grayskull LP, any novice progression? The reason why they're so successful is not just the muscle from all the extra calories, but the, the thing is, it's hard not to adhere to when you're burning 3,000 calories, you're eating 5,000, and then you're doing, um, you're doing less volume, but you're, you're increasing the weight. Here's, here's another reason why it would be better to bulk. So, here's the thing, why I would go, if you're skinny fat, why I would go for a bulk first, not a recomp, and why this would be better. Say, say in your first year you put on 10 pounds of fat, no, 10 pounds of muscle, 2 pounds of fat. So you put on 12 pounds. Well, um, here's, here's the thing, you're going to look leaner, so you're, <laughs> you're going to think, I lost 2 pounds of fat and gained 14 pounds of muscle. So people, here's the thing, I literally did like a bulk for four months, did a, did a mini, did a three to four week mini cut, about almost four week mini cut, and then now I'm bulking again, having cut like, having cut like 15 pounds, I did a mini cut, having cut 10 to 15 pounds, and before those four months I did another mini cut, where I cut four to 15, I mean, I did another four week mini cut before my last four month bulk and I cut 10 to 15 pounds again. So I'm putting, so here's, here's the thing. Even though I was fatter, my, um, a relative was like, Hey, how, how come every time I see you, you're, you're, uh, leaner and bigger, <laughs> you're more muscular and leaner. It's like, it's like, okay, I, and I'm like, I told her, it's like, I work out like six, six days a week in a deficit. Okay, it was an exaggeration. It was like four, it was like nine days every two weeks. But when I was bulking, it was literally got up to six days a week where I do a squat, a deadlift, a press, a bench, a chin up day. That, here's the thing, the advantage of, say, a bro split, you, you might only have to load the bar um, once a day. So, for instance, if you're going, if you're going, if you're, if you're, um, obese and you need to cut, what I'd recommend is doing something like 5-3-1 and not actually starting strength, um, and doing it, getting some sort of a starter bar. You get, get something high quality that's lighter, not something that's cheap. And then here, here's the thing. Have a day, have a day, or run Jason Blaha's linear hypertrophy program. Some sort of linear periodization. Weight periodization is just shorter because it's like 10, 8, 5, 
and then maybe some three, maybe a one or a max. But weight periodization is just you're you're getting more intense while you're dropping the volume. And even running programs will do this. So <laughs> I'm literally just making a spike. Literally just gonna make a spike. <laughs> what you would call it, spiky? But yeah. So if you're gonna do, if you're obese, do a cut. If you're actually skinny fat, meaning you're a normal weight or slightly overweight, um, you, you know, do a bulk. I wouldn't recommend a recomp. I did. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. There, it's impossible to track two two hundred calories up or down. It's impossible. That's like half a pound a week. You know, literally by the time, by the time you're lo you've you've lost half a pound. And here's the thing, when you lose weight on the scale, you'll literally lose like uh, 5 to 10 pounds, on average about maybe 7 pounds the first 3 days. Um, you want to track week 2 to 4, and you want to get a smart scale. So you want to get a smart scale that will either send the info to your phone, or, or, or um, send it to your phone or a Google spreadsheet. So, you actually, so, the thing, what I was doing, and nobody does this for longer than a month, so this would be a good way to kickstart weight loss for, like, a month. Um, take a picture of the scale with your phone, so put it, like, on, on the bathroom table, and then, you know, so, it gives me a readout, and then I take a picture of it. Here's the thing, while the weight is, the weight is accurate, or at least precise, day to day, um, the, the some of the scales will give you a body fat percentage and these are total B, total bs because it literally just like runs an electric current and it can't tell the difference between t different types of tissue and then at, at the same time it'll have like entering your body not your body entering your age the problem is with entering in your age if you say you're 40 versus like 18 to 25 the older you say you are, the higher of a body fat it will give you. So, electrical impedance, it's not really good. Um, if you wanted to measure body fat, I'd go with the tape measure method. So, measure around, for men, measure around your waist. Yeah, waist and hip. Here's the thing. Women, it's waist, hips, and neck. Men, it's just waist and neck. Um, for guys, it's not really accurate. For waist and search navy body fat calculator so so do your waist and your neck and then the thing is this might not be accurate but it's still like okay i i was th this relative amount of tightness and i decreased i decreased um you know you can say hey my my waist got thinner but my neck didn't get thinner or my neck got wider Here's here's the thing. Here's the thing. While you're not getting too big, could cause sleep apnea. You're not going to get that from deadlifts. You're not going to get any major compound lift. It's not going to get your neck big enough to where to where you're, you know, um, to where you're getting sleep apnea. And here's the thing. You might lose you might lose fat around the neck, which that's why people lose their sleep apnea. So, yeah. I shouldn't have done this. I should put the mat down first. Okay, I'm a dumb dumb. Okay. Talk, talk to you guys later. Toodles.